Hello and welcome. We're sitting with Tessie C. Coson. She is one of the most powerful women in the Philippines, the vice chair of, of SMIC, and she's smiling even as I say that because she's also extremely modest. Let me turn to her. This is your first time at yes. the World Economic Forum. Yes, we're basically a domestic company, so we didn't think that we'll, uh, we, will, we have to be a member here, but right now we're here. But you are moving beyond the Philippines, is that correct? Yes, we are. We are in China, and of course with the ASEAN integrations, we're looking to the opportunities in the ASEAN area. Well, let's start first with the Philippines. How do you see the Philippines today? Uh, as they say, I was just looking at it, it's fun to be in the Philippines. It's fun for investment. It's just that you have to know the Philippines from an eye-level point of view. And with that, um, you, uh, then you know how to navigate and there's a lot of, uh, the market is, uh, has, has 100,000 population, and that's 15% um, of the ASEAN market. Uh, and there's a lot of islands, uh, which means that there are a lot of opportunities to work along those islands, not only for tourism, but also for the business side. On the negative side of doing business in Europe, people have talked about the ease of doing business, levels of corruption, manufacturing, agriculture. How do you see it? What are the challenges? Well, you just have to understand that those are given and uh, see how you can navigate along it, along them. And also, maybe it would be best to have a good local partner that can navigate the, uh, the road in front, of, uh, in front of you. So this is similar to Indonesia, right? It's uh, it's very basic. Uh, it's not only it's it's uh, it's in many many countries. So you have to you have to do business like a local. <laughs> think global. Oh, that's a that's a tagline. Think, um, think global and uh, work local. Well, then let me ask you. You're a member of the ASEAN Business Council. What are you seeing? We're talking about a combined market by 2015. Is that a possibility? Uh, I think right now it's more of awareness. The actual integrations may come five years later, which is actually the original date of integration. So, uh, but one, uh, another thing that I see is that when the delegates of the ASEAN uh, Business uh, Advisory Councils are together, it's brotherhood. It's, we are really, hum we're really, uh, I mean, we have, uh, we're very friendly to each other we have similar culture, so it's actually very easy to assimilate. Is this, well, when, when AEC 2015 came up, right, so the ASEAN signed the agreement in 2007, the idea there was to create one economic market where it basically, the 630 million people, you can do business in it like you would do business in one country. You, like, yes, I don't think that's possible because uh, all of the countries have their sovereign uh, borders. But what is possible is that we would uh, harmonize a lot of the policy, a lot of the government regulations, so that's easier to move from one country to another in terms of the manpower needs and in terms of the uh, business investment. You said that and it, education. Could, it could take five years later before this ambition of an ASEAN. I think so. Is that a failure on ASEAN's no, part? No, no, the original date is 2020. Okay. They just thought of accelerating it and make, and, and and just uh, do it for 2015. But uh, I think, you know, I think 2015 or even now is the start of awareness that there is this ASEAN integrations where, where uh, people can move around more uh, easily yep. and business can move around more easily. Um, an ADB report writ co-written by an ASEAN, a former ASEAN Secretary General said that up to 77% of companies that would benefit from the three trade agreements don't even know about it. Uh, yes, it's very true. Even here in the Philippines, a lot of us do not know the, the, the impact of uh, ASEAN integrations. And it is good for us that the other countries are just about in the same pace. So we'll all move the same pace uh, in the sense that We'll go into the awareness first, and then at understanding it, and really then working on the uh, benefits of ASEAN integrations. What are the positives and negatives for integration for a company like SM? Uh, for us, we like it in the sense that we would be able to, uh, to see more people coming in, and the business models will evolve. Uh, there will be more cooperations uh, among, among uh, businesses in this in this region, uh, but of course there'll be more competitions. Yes. 
are we prepared? Because the problem, some analysts have said that since we're a middle country, we're not among the poorest where manufacturing investments will go in because labor is cheap, and we're not among the top, the middle nation could face a lot more negative consequences. Yeah, it depends upon how the government views the whole thing. If they're going to move in the pace of our uh, ASEA neighbors, then there's no problem. But if we're going to go move much ahead, open up much earlier and not at the same pace, yes. then I think some businesses will be affected. You don't, some Western nations find the, con the kind of constructive engagement, the brotherhood that you talked about uh, slow and lacking leadership. What do you say to things like that? Do we need to have one leader in the ASEAN nations? I, you know, I think it is, at, this, at this point, we don't know yet. Because you know, these this countries are just recognizing that we have to harmonize, that we are one and we have uh, a similar objective in the future. So it will take a while. Maybe in the future, they'll see the, a need for the leader. But as of now, it's a matter of uh, assimilating first. You mentioned SM is going into China. What are the other countries you're investing in, uh, thinking about? No, right now we are more into, we have, we are already in China. Yes. Uh, in the other ASEAN countries, um, we're still looking, but we would like to invite the other ASEAN countries to come to the Philippines. So looking for that foreign the investment. Yeah, community. after all, Philippines right now is uh, seen as the uh, good investment country. So, so there you know, are potential partnerships. Yeah, potential partnership and other opportunities. I think there are a lot of things that we can look into for uh, for cooperations, even in the business side. Can I ask you about banking? Um, uh, Philippine banks tend to be a little bit smaller than their yes. regional counterparts. For some, for a bank like that you yes. are connect, BDO, what does that mean? Is that we uh, are looking into the south uh, to expansions in the region. The banking we have to go out because we, la we have to have that connectivity in terms of the financial uh, requirement and transactions. Uh, so the, in, in the bank, we have to go out and we have to uh, scale up So because right now we're very small and we're trying to convince the government to make it easier for us to grow. BDO has done very well though. I mean, well, not bad. <laughs> that's, that's good, very modest. Um, do you see more consolidation then as ASEAN gains strength as this as it become, becomes one market? I think so. With more interest coming from the other ASEAN market, there will be uh, there will be M and A. What about real estate? Some people are some analysts are talking about a real estate bubble, an oversupply. I don't think. Business. Well, I can only speak about the Philippines, and I don't think uh, I don't think there is a real estate bubble uh, in the near future. Uh, maybe maybe uh, later on, but not yet now, because there's still a lot of the housing shortage. The, you know, it changes from the old housing to the, uh, to, uh, uh, to the better buildings, and also the splitting of the family into yeah. different uh, family units. The, this is, uh, SM really recently consolidated everything. I mean, yes. what were the positives in doing that? Uh, for the with uh, I think in the past we were having residences as separate from the uh, from the malls with different ob business objectives yeah. and right now if we integrate it then there will we will be able to capture the synergy are you seeing it happen already or it's too soon to tell uh, I think we are already consolid we are already integrating and we'll be seeing the uh, the benefit soon um, it, on infrastructure, there was also talk about uh, SM working with San Miguel or other. Are you in talks with any of them? Uh, the not at this time, but we are very we are interested to look into opportunities with any of those uh, infrastructures uh, 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 winner. Well, now I'm interested in Tessie the woman. Mm. Uh, you came of age in this family. You are now handling tremendous amounts and looking global. I mean, what have been the challenges for you? Uh, it is difficult in the past, but I'm okay now. Very succinct. <laughs> <laughs> uh, could you tell us more? Like, are, are there, I guess, at, in terms of... Uh, I guess my attitude has changed, and also people's attitude toward me ha have changed. 
So I guess uh, so. There's a more there's more mutual respect, and I think uh, I, I've gained not I gained some knowledge on how to do things according to what people like how how they like things to be done, and so there are uh, we have better relationships you know in many areas. In terms of the Philippines now, I mean, this there are many companies that started family as a family business and then have moved and and expanded and grown to become multinational corporations and how, how do, where do you see SM in this in this uh, timeline the business will evolve as as we have evolved before from a shoe store to uh, to what we are today uh, it was we I don't think we planned it that way but it was just an evolution of uh, uh, investing reinvesting and as uh, and just roll or in, just keep on rolling uh, and believe in the country, believe in really distributing uh, your network uh, nationwide and going to the depth of the business in the, in, in, in the, in the consumer industry. Uh, with that, I think it has given us this benefit of being what we are today. Has your family and your family, your, your your family changed with the growth of the companies? No, we manage. still believe very much in the investment here. I think we are basically a Philippine-based company that uh, will be going up, uh, abroad. Global. Um, what are the dangers uh, for a company like SM in this globalized community? When, uh, when some sectors of the communities or the government will think that we're too big and they try to clip our wings, then that is the dif that then that will be difficult. You don't see anything. Do you see this happening right now? Uh, we can have we have some hints and we can feel it, mm -hmm. but you see our company is more com uh, is more community based, yes. and uh, we work with the community. So there are a lot of communities in the Philippines, yes. and I think there are a lot of areas which still are untouched. Yes. And if that make us big, isn't that natural? And isn't scaling part of what you need to be able to also move outwards? I think it's more of uh, going to the, you know, expanding our reach. Okay. Because in Philippines, there's still a lot of areas which are not really developed yes. to the modern uh, retail. And so I think we can still go to those areas. But, you know, that will make us big. And of course, some people will not be happy. Uh, but I wish they understand. I will ask, would you like to talk about those areas? No. Okay. <laughs> I believe that. I understand. Um, what, if, what would you want to see from government now? I mean, you have two years of this administration left. I would like the government, uh, you know, there are, I uh, appreciate what the government is doing in upgrading the investment, our investment grade, in attracting foreign investors to look into the Philippines. I think that's great. Uh, what I like the government to, to look into is understand the business, the business needs that a business needs to, uh, needs to be motivated by, you know, by the profit and so leave, us, leave some profit to us. <laughs> this is a time of disruption, not just because of AEC 2015, this, this economic integration, but also because of technology. This gen the generation today, your daughter yes. is very different. <laughs> Twenty somethings are That's different. And do you? How do you see the change? How are you adapting to these changes? That's why I was saying that the business model will change because in the last few years things have been changing a lot because of the digital space. And I don't know how the business will be in the future, even our own business. Uh, but basically, we'll still be property based. And in the other areas, uh, we'll have to look. We'll have to follow wh wherever the trend, the trend will take us. Fantastic. Well, la last thoughts. Well, we're at the World Economic Forum. What have been your lessons today? I mean, you've been in meetings and sessions. Uh, what are your takeaways from the first day of the forum? Uh, I think I just learn from the people that I've been meeting, and uh, and it makes you think uh, beyond beyond our borders and for your first year, so we're going to see more of Tessie C here uh, at the World Economic Forum. But the, the last part is, as a woman, are there any challenges you face that a man, a, a male CEO would not? Uh, in the past, but uh, at my age, I don't think, uh, I, I, 
it's not difficult anymore. And we all know that there are areas which are, uh, which are not possible for women and there are areas which are not really that great for, which are not going to be that great for men. So there's a pro and con and it doesn't really matter. You just have to go to where you can do your best. Fantastic. We've touched a lot of different th topics. Just your last thoughts as you move forward coming out of your the time of disruption, technology, the companies you lead. What would you leave for, for viewers? Uh, invest in the Philippines. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, thank okay. you so much. We have been speaking with Tessie C. Kosunch, uh, the Vice Chair of SMIC, one of the Philippines' most powerful women. I'm Maria Ressa for Rapplet. Thank you very much.